Amid the remains of civilization, there are survivors. In North America, the pungent smell of old food sitting in kitchens is giving a whole new meaning to the phrase, wolf at the door. 14 days after people, some of the 400,000 wolves living in the wild invade homes for an easy meal. While wolves are moving in, dogs are trying to move out, but these animals remain bound to humans. We started manipulating the genetic makeup and the characteristics of other animals long before we had agriculture. Neoteny, the tendency of retaining childlike characteristics, is something that we kept emphasizing in dogs. That's why dogs accept our authority without challenging it. Dogs aren't even good at little tasks like getting out of the house. They couldn't break a window. They couldn't, they've been taught not to tear up things and so forth. And most of them would just sit there and starve to death. But one kind of canine would be ideally suited to this new world, the village dog. Belonging to no one, they live on the outskirts of towns and are lean survival machines. They weigh about 20 pounds, and they're designed to operate really cheaply. They can eat the worst, awfulest food in the world. They've been doing it for thousands of years and so on. They can get by with just a little. For the first months after people, large populations of village dogs live, eat, and battle for the mountains of food at landfills and dumps. After that, survival becomes a riskier proposition. Three months after people, one of mankind's oldest treasures endures, the prehistoric art on the Lascaux Caves in southern France. For tens of thousands of years, the breathtaking paintings and engravings, thought to be drawn by Cro-Magnon Man, were entombed in the caves. In 1940, their discovery by modern man stunned the world. The quality of them, the dynamism, is just astounding. It is among the most beautiful art ever produced by mankind. Now, undisturbed again, they could survive for thousands of years more as long as they stay buried. It is four months after people. In the frozen wastes of Norway's northernmost islands, a doorway in the snow leads to a mysterious crypt. Known as the Doomsday Vault, it was meant to secure the world against a disaster that is now happening in a life after people. That disaster was sparked in the time of humans by the need to feed an exploding population. Agricultural companies engineered seeds to produce super crops and maximize output. Huge tracts of farmland were planted with the single best variety of seed. But this sacrificed a crop's strongest protection from pests, diversity. The diversity that allowed farmers in the 17 and 1800s to establish agriculture in the United States is largely gone. Probably 95% of the corn varieties and wheat varieties that existed back in the 1800s, gone forever. If a single pest or disease comes along and likes the first plant, it's gonna like all the rest of them. So domesticated crops just don't last for very long. In the time of humans, farmers protected their crops with pesticides. Four months after people, there's nothing to stop a single species of insect from mowing down hundreds of thousands of acres. The vault in Norway, called the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, was built for just this kind of doomsday play with a capacity to store a billion seeds and millions of different kinds. 
it can bring life back to Earth. If something really were to go wrong in this world, an asteroid hitting the Earth or a global nuclear war, then this seed vault does contain seeds which we would use to restore agriculture in the world. In the time of humans, an artificial cooling system chilled the vault to minus four degrees, perfect for seed storage. Since the electricity failed, the vault has been warming up. It will stabilize at 25 degrees, the temperature of the surrounding permafrost. But how long can the seeds now survive?